Have you heard of Nong Mei? Nong Mei is a shore located in the eastern coastal area of Hong Kong, next to the Tai Mei Tok and Nong Mei Chun. But before talking about Nong Mei, we should learn about its neighbor first, the Tang Kok Mangrove and Marshy Chow. Tang Kok Mangrove is a site of special scientific interest, being protected by the government due to its unique value in Hong Kong wildlife. While on the other side, Marshy Chow is an important special area with high ecological value. Neighboring with this area with high ecological value, it is no doubt that Nong Mei Beach has an excellent environment to nurture various organisms. The mangrove and mudflat in Nong Mei provide a great habitat for the animals to live. It remained unnoticed until the Nong Mei Beach construction was brought up on the table and people soon realized that it is a wildlife hotspot. Even though there are so many animals living here, do the villagers or visitors know about them? So, I want to know, do you know that this mountain is what? This mountain is not a big mountain. It's a big mountain. It's a very beautiful mountain. This mountain is a big mountain. It's a big mountain. It seems he people are only quite familiar with the issue on Long Mei Beach construction. For that, we would like to know more about the ecological value of Long Mei. Therefore, we invited Mr. Wang Chi Chen Dixon, the spokesperson of the HK Wildlife Forum, to talk about the situation at that time. So, as you may know, that um, Long Mei is part of the natural coastal line along the Tingko uh, Mangrove SSSI. Long Mei actually is why it is so have such high biodiversity. The reason is very interesting that you can't find any other similar uh, composition of this uh, substratum nearby. For example, the, the Tingko mainly are the, or what we call the mud flat or sand flat. There is more uh, sandy. For Long Mei, Long Mei actually it got um, a very small patches of uh, mangrove and it also got some asterine, two main uh, river discharge and at the same time it got some sand flat and uh, rubble straw, boulder straw. So it's just only 200 meters long, but it composed of different uh, micro habitat, or you can say different seashore habitat. So it is like a mosaic, it's a mixture of uh, different habitat to accommodate many different types of species. For the boulders or rocky shore, the boulders are having many space for different types of, for example, the rock oyster, uh, the crabs that is hiding uh, beneath or hiding up in some of the gaps of the rocks. So, Long Mei have the estuary area, so it provides a very ideal place for them to uh, breeding and also an ideal place for them to uh, come up along the estuary area to the uh, freshwater stream. So, Long Mei can hold up to as our survey continue, we found more than 400 species of uh, marine or intertidal organisms. And, and during the migration season, we also record some of the migrating uh, waders, the birds, species. They were feeding along the straw, for example, the curlew, the sandpiper, uh, uh, etc. So, um, it's really a pity that because uh, some people say it's only uh, 200 meters long, 
it's not a big deal for losing Long Bay. But as we do our survey along the whole coastal line, there's nothing, no other coastal line uh, look the same species diversity and its uh, substrate composition as Long Bay. I see. Long Bay Beach is built because there was no beach facility in the eastern region of New Territories. Hence, it was suggested to develop a bobbing beach there in response to the demand for swimming facilities. On the 12th of May 1998, the XPRC's Culture, Recreation and Sports Committee endorsed the implementation of a feasibility study commissioned by the Architectural Service Department, which concluded that it was feasible to construct a bobbing beach at Nong Mei. In October 2012, the Hong Kong Chief Executive, Lan Chen Ying, gave the plan to go ahead. The work included construction of a 200 meter long bathing beach with a groin at each end, a shark prefection land, a public car park, retaining walls, and the associated roadworks, drainage, and sewage works. The approval project estimate is 208.2 million. But the environmentalists and green groups at that time fought against the policy. They argued that the project is a disaster for more than 200 marine and bird species. Although there was an initial environmental impact assessment for the project, it was poorly done and recorded fewer than 30 species of organisms, concluding that Nong Mei Shou has low biodiversity. However, with continuous field surveys done by HK Wildlife, a local web forum of nature enthusiasts. More than 200 species has been recorded in the Long May Shore since 2008. Among them are many endangered, threatened, and rare species, such as the mud shrimp, the sole, the dragon net, spotted seahorse, grass puffer, and the Indo Pacific tropical sand goby. It is also important to note that the spotted seahorse was found to breed in the shore. What will be the upcoming consequence and how will it affect the nearby areas just like Dengko? To my knowledge, the whole substratum is a change completely. I don't think the organism will come back. So they lost their habitat, they lost their home forever. Um, in, the long, in the long run, uh, maybe Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe the because the Long Bay Beach is going to some uh, too long uh, concrete bar to avoid the sand being dripped out, uh, the sand uh, being washed away. So those two um, concrete or artificial rocky bands may attract, may provide some uh, habitat for some organism. But as I say, Long Mei is important because it got a mosaic of different habitat. If you now only have the boulders and the sand, um, it can attract some comeback, but not as many as in the past. And the other drawback is because uh, Long Mei now have uh, quite a big car park, it's trying to attract more people in the summertime. The people may be feeling the disappointment by the sandy beach because maybe the beach is very small and the water is not good. So those visitors may just flood out to the nearby area. They may go to uh, the Dingkok area or they may go to Tai Mekdo area. And these still now is the natural coastal line may have more visitor than in the past uh, if the visitors uh, are not regulated uh, they can do whatever they want uh, they can take the shellfish uh, catch the crabs collect the whole bucket of starfish back to home and that will be devastating. Uh, that will be damaging the whole ecosystem, not just because of the construction of the habitat loss of the 200 meters, but in the adjacent 
maybe 500 or one kilo long coastal line natural habitat will be disturbed uh, seriously by the, the numerous visitors. I see. So it's about the human impact. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do you uh, view the compensation made by the government in the long way? Mm, I don't know the details, but um, but how can you compensate if you yeah you have if you destroy the whole uh, coastal line? You are not making another home for for the um, organism. They say one of the compensation is they have some specialists going to a uh, long way before the construction work. They collect uh, those starfish, sea cucumber, or whatever they can catch, and then transfer to Tinkok Pass or Tinkok Dong. I think that's, that's silly and that's not effective. You once you 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 you're not just uh, disturbing the the construction site area, but you are also disturbing the other side. The other side actually they already have some habitants there, but now you are putting more there, so it means they will have stronger in competition, and even uh, some of the organisms may not be adaptable to that place. So that's um, not the win-win situation, that's the loss-loss. As we can see, the Long May Beach now appears rubbish piles. There are people rushing to the beach and parking slots are most full, even though it's not yet opened. Sure that the Long May Beach can attract more people, but it also brings more pollution and more serious traffic congestion. According to a store owner nearby, Taimito is already a tourist hotspot for cycling picnics and water sports, so the construction there will not make a huge difference. While the people near the Tinkok Sai, it does not help to bring much flow of people, so they do not benefit from it. But the increased flow of people indeed put pressure on Tinkok Road, the only road that connects Tai Meitok to the Taipo city centre, affecting transportation there. For the ecological loss, what are the compensation? In fact, the government had initiated a Tinkok Coastal Conservation Plan in 2012, as well as the relocation of marine life on the construction site. But no one knows what exactly did the project achieve and how effective the activities could educate the public. Not many visitors or locals have heard of the conservation plan. For relocation, according to CEDD, around 1,700 target marine species and two spotted seahorse were moved to Tenkok East, but its effectiveness was questioned by the environmentalists. The construction of Barving Beach in Long May is about to open to the public, and what has been done cannot be undone. Unfortunately, people still do not understand or realize the loss of the ecosystem originally on this beach. Even though they feel ashamed for the loss of marine life, they admit that it was better to have a place for amusement. 你看看那些沙灘,以前有個泳灘,有沒有感覺? 給別人給大家都有水,有汽水也好 the act for compensation of the project seems to be petered out and they are doubtful to be the window dressing to please the environmentalists. Will it really bring the benefits to the construction wish to achieve? Could we bear the consequence of the construction? These answer lie in the near future. Uh, yeah. 
So this is really disappointing. It's a big loss. Yeah, it's just ridiculous in terms of marine conservation.